Hi, I'm Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio. Thanks for joining me for another edition of my blog here. It is Saturday, February 5th, 2011. Uh, thanks for tuning in. As usual, what we're going to do is just hit some questions that have been popular questions coming in off the website over the last little while. And uh, the first question I'm going to cover is from Benny out in Minnesota. He wrote in saying, I watched your video on power chords, but there's a really bright sounding power chord that Steve Vai uses. Do you know what I'm talking about? And can you possibly show me what that chord might be? You didn't seem to cover it. Uh, I think I know exactly what chord it is that you're uh, thinking of. It's uh, a chord where he basically uses the root of the uh, uh, power chord, goes over an octave higher, and actually plays the power chord on the upper two string sets. I'm gonna pop some distortion on, and uh, that's the one right there I'm pretty sure that you're thinking of. And, So um, yeah, I don't have all the digital delay and effects that uh, Steve has, but you know that's the essence of it. Um, basically, you've got uh, your root of the chord is found off of fifth string, and then he's using the power chord off of uh, the um, second and first strings, essentially. So the way I would suggest working that into your playing is to go with uh, ring finger on that uh, fifth string root there, go up the octave and take the power chord with your index and baby fingers. And then you'll just have to use the underside of your ring finger as well as the top of your index to kill out the notes on the fourth and third strings. And you basically got that sound. It's a very cool sound. Uh, I think it's in uh, Yankee Rose, you know, some of the stuff that he did with David Lee Roth and I guess the White Snake stuff and all of his solo stuff. So it's kind of one of his staple sounding power chord uh, sounds. Um, okay, let's go to the next uh, uh, sorry, the next question. This is kind of an interesting progression in this question. It's from uh, Gilberto out in Mexico. He wrote in saying, I have a pop jazz progression I came up with that I quite like a lot, but I'm not sure of how to play over it. It goes like this, B major seven, uh, F sharp dominant with a sharp nine. Kind of a cool sound, that change. D major seven, and then G dominant nine. So uh, that's pretty cool progression. are really not very well connected um, but there's a lot of things that you can do that'll be fun if you've got the you know this thing recorded you can be ready to play over it I would treat the B as the root chord obviously and just you know jam out in that with major scale but then when you come up to this F sharp dominant 7 sharp 9 I mean there's a couple things you can do there uh, one of the things I think sounds really neat is to play uh, like we're kind of in B coming into that five chord that's uh, you know altered and I think it sounds kind of neat to play harmonic minor off the B there on those situations it's kind of a neat sound another cool thing is whenever you come across those chords you can just play uh, minor uh, pentatonic that's a really nice sound on that too So you can just cover through that chord with the uh, F sharp minor pentatonic for, um, for covering it. And then when you come up to the D major 7, well, I, I mean, you could try using some sounds of B minor, which would be kind of like D major pentatonic. But I think I would try more in a full, you know, make a full sound out of it and use Lydian mode. It would be a really nice sound on that uh, to use Lydian. And then when you come to the G9, on that chord I would again just go modal and I would use uh, mix Lydian on the G9 there. So uh, just to wrap up, um, B major, like Ionian mode, maybe F sharp minor pentatonic. D major doing the, uh, the Lydian mode. Lydian. And then come back around. So you have to practice that a little bit. You know, if you're unfamiliar with your modes, you're going to have a little bit of modal workout there. Uh, but uh, very cool chord progression. Really like it a lot. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if uh, other folks out there come up with some neat ideas on that, be sure to leave some tips in the comments below. Uh, because that's a really nifty progression there. So thanks for sending that in. Uh, let's head to the next question, which actually is just a, it's actually another modal type question. It's mixolydian based. 
It's from Conrad. Um, he didn't say where he's from, but uh, Conrad wrote in saying, I watched your Mixolydian mode series and I still need help with a couple of things. Um, w with Mixolydian, I, I, first of all, I can't um, understand how to write progressions very well with Mixolydian. Uh, I don't understand the target tone concept. Uh, so let's start with that. He's got a couple other questions here. So essentially, like, let's just pick a key. So we have a key to work with to explain this. Uh, let's pick A major. Now, if you're doing an A major sound that's Mixolydian, uh, the unique color tone of Mixolydian is, you know, the flat seven tone of the scale. So in our case of A, our example that we picked, that would be a G. So we're getting a G sound to it being influenced around an A major tonality. So you can do, you can set up progressions basically where you, you know, pop G notes into chords. You know, you can start with a root chord of, uh, you know, A dom and seventh, maybe it's got the G in it. You know, I'm gonna hit here maybe the, I did a D major chord next, uh, that's the fourth chord. And maybe come back to an A triad or something, you know, that's kind of a nice sound. So you could try that in the beginning. Another really nice thing I like doing a lot when I'm dealing with Mixolydian is to take uh, the five chord and make it minor because you know uh, what happens in that case, like in the case of a typical five chord from a standard A major key center, that chord would have a G sharp in it off of uh, off the fifth, which is E. But if you make it into E minor, of course that uh, third degree drops down and becomes a G natural, which is that color tone that we're after for Mixolydian, right? progression up that goes let's say from a major chord to a five chord that's minor and maybe I'll just drop down to that D suss it out give it a little bit more taste of G you know there's some tips for you you know so so what you're doing though is when you pass through chord changes you're trying to constantly influence that unique color tone that makes the mode so that's hopefully answers your first uh, question there and says here also, uh, what order should I work on playing and practicing the mode with? What, should I do arpeggios first? Should I do pentatonics first? Uh, or should I not bother with pentatonics or that, any of that stuff at all? Uh, what's your advice here? You know, how to, how to go through this in what order? Um, well, I, I guess, you know, in one sense, maybe a lot of people would say, hey, really, there is no order overall. But, you know, I would say your best bet is to work with possibly pentatonics in the beginning and then move into the whole world of, uh, you know, something like um, uh, the full scale or arpeggio based ideas. Because if you're using arpeggio based ideas, um, you know, you're really outlining the chord, uh, you know, specifically that's going to be your chord colors that have the, the modal, you know, aspect to them. You know, let's say, for instance, if you're dealing with uh, uh, A again, you know, that there was a G that we had spoken of. So, I mean, if you're doing an A dominant seventh arpeggio and you're trying to influence sounds in Mixolydian, well, then, you know, the, it, by doing the A dominant seventh arpeggio, the G is in there and it's, it's influencing it. But you know, um, when I first started with uh, with modes, I really was just mainly focusing on pentatonics in the beginning. I felt that they helped me the best to get the sounds of the mode, you know, to roll in. I was doing a lot of pentatonic scale soloing, and then I was moving into the world of whatever the mode was. Like if, if it was Mixolydian, I'd start off, do lines with pentatonic, and then I'd move into the uh, Mixolydian mode after that. So um, anyway, hopefully that helps you out a little bit and uh, maybe you need to just research modes a little bit more or maybe, you know, revisit that whole modal series. You know, sometimes you have to watch some of these uh, videos uh, more than once. You know, they, they don't quite digest all the information on just one viewing, you know. Uh, but I got time for one more question and this one's going to come at us here from Garrett out in Toronto, Canada. He wrote in saying, I'm graduating music school this year. Do you have any suggestions for me for long-term planning? I'm quite worried that I won't be able to make a living as a musician. Um, well, you know, I, it's funny because I came across the Time magazine, you know, that was saying what the best directions for careers are in 2011. And, um, you know, in the entertainment business was actually ranked as the worst uh, direction for a, um, a pursuing a career in. So, uh, you know, I think what's happening with the entertainment business and just in with being, you know, the aspect of being a musician these days is that, you know, it is so much more work that's involved. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're going to be doing 
uh, work at a scale that's so much more involved than is if maybe you just pursued a, a true profession, like maybe becoming a, a, a doctor or a dentist or something. You know, you're, the, the work that you're building is all uh, based around you generating income, you need cash flow, you need to develop projects that create cash flow. Uh, you know, you, your best bet, I think, is to look at forming some decent bands and maybe getting into some you know certain niche projects where those projects are essentially going to help create a cash flow that's fairly consistent for gigging because if you're just doing rock and your specialty is because only one style sometimes that works but sometimes you know it's it's maybe too flooded in the marketplace um, you know, I know in my city, there's just loads of rock bands, uh, there's loads of country bands, but I, I know some of the guys that are, let's say, doing, you know, work in the Caribbean scenes, they're, they're, do, they're working much more because it, it's an, a niche style. It's not your standard rock, you know, band thing that you, the, the bars are just flooded with that stuff. So um, there's that aspect of it. There is possibly uh, looking at, I guess, um, trying to create products, trying to you know market yourself, trying to create uh, uh, maybe a, a, a name for yourself, whether it's on YouTube or, or locally as a, a somebody that's got a specialty of some sort. Um, you know, sometimes fingerstyle guitarists can really do well with uh, you know functions like maybe anniversary events, maybe uh, wedding uh, gigs, that kind of thing. Uh, wedding is uh, weddings are seasonal and they happen to be seasonal at a time if like for someone like myself when teaching slows down into the summer then I pick up with wedding gigs uh, on the weekends and they pay really well you're uh, you're really doing work with people that are in a gr good mood you know great crowd to work with everybody's happy you know that kind of thing so these kind of directions I think are really important um, but overall I would say you know generating some products would be one of the main things that I would say that you should pursue in the beginning so maybe it's uh, uh, your unique take on soloing maybe it's a, a, co a comprehensive uh, overview of a whole bunch of uh, people soloing styles and then get out there on YouTube and start doing you know video blogging and start you know create a blog and you know create a website where you can have people visit and you don't need a lot of people visiting your blogs you know it might take you a year or two to build up a little bit of an audience but you know if you have you know anywhere between maybe 10,000 to 15,000 people or so a day visiting your sites and they're well uh, set up with uh, monetization uh, you know ideas maybe it's uh, different affiliate programs and different ideas of uh, click-through marketing then you know you you'll have a, a separate income stream that will obviously grow and plus you you know that combined with let's say maybe some teaching that you're doing and maybe a band that you have that's doing certain style of work that's uh, more in demand perhaps and perhaps if you can also go in the direction of doing some finger style work which would be just a soloist work then you get into those anniversary events, banquets, uh, wine and cheese events, uh, cocktail parties, uh, home parties, uh, weddings. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the list can kind of go on and on and on. But anniversaries is, uh, and all that stuff. So hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of uh, what you can pursue. But uh, it is a lot of work. It's, it's a little bit different um, pursuit than a lot of jobs. So anyway, hopefully it helps you out. Well, anyway, that's about time, uh, all the time I have for, for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and sending in all the great questions. I'm just flooded with them, so thanks a million. Keep in mind that, uh, you know, if your question doesn't get answered here and it doesn't get answered on the Creative Guitar Studio YouTube channel, I'm now doing a podcast, about a half hour podcast once a week. They come out every Monday and also have a new course available too. I should uh, plug that a little bit. It's called Rhythm Duration Boot Camp. It's associated to my uh, music reading video series that I just put out on my Creative Guitar Studio YouTube channel there. It's called The Fingerboard Connection. It's a new uh, three-part series on, uh, on the channel. And if uh, you need help with rhythms, um, this new program that I put out will for sure take you to the next level. So uh, anyway, until next time, take care everybody and uh, I will catch up with you on my next video blog. Bye for now.